You know, for all its glory and prowess, Argentina has a history of delivering unexpected jolts when it comes to politics and its economy. And we saw a repeat of this during the recent national primary elections, where, surprisingly, the victor emerged as Javier Milay, a charismatic and unconventional libertarian economist whose vision includes advocating for dollarization, radical government spending cuts, expanded gun ownership, and the controversial legalization of human organ sales. Hmm, not sure if controversial is quite the right word, but pff, it's the best we've got. Milai was previously an economics professor turned TV personality, with less than two years of congressional experience and no prior involvement with executive roles. When you get a hold of these facts, you might ask, how exactly was he able to gather enough support to win in the first place? Well, the answer is, it all boiled down to his anti-establishment stance. He became known for acting charismatically against the conventional social, political and economic principles of Argentina's society. And with that ingredient in hand, he's had the right recipe for gathering public support for a long time now. So in a way, his win wasn't all that surprising. If anything, it showed that his stance wasn't just reminiscent of far-right figures like Jair Bolsonaro and Donald Trump, but also strongly resonated with Argentine voters who were weary of ongoing government shortcomings. You see, for decades, Argentina has struggled to capitalize on its abundant natural resources and human capital. And frankly, the people are frustrated with the government and want something different. That something different might be Javier Milay. At the elections, Milay secured an impressive 30% of the votes, surpassing predictions from recent polls. And this result has great significance because the primary vote usually serves as a dress rehearsal for the presidential, congressional and gubernatorial elections in October. So if we're going by recent indications, Milai is expected to be the favourite going into the October elections. Now, after Milai, the prominent centre-right opposition, Juntos por el Cambio, struggled to deal with the prevailing public anger and gathered just 28.3% of the votes. On the other hand, the long-standing Peronist movement, which had been in charge of government affairs since 1983, faltered and landed in third place. There were also abstentions from Argentines that measured up to more than 30% of the expected votes, which was mind-boggling, seeing that for this election, voting was actually an official mandate. Now, the elections have come and gone, and the question on everyone's mind is, how has it affected the economy? Well, not to mince words, but the economy in Argentina has been pretty rattled by it. We'll explain. After the election results came out, Economy Minister Sergio Massa swung into action, quickly devaluing the heavily skewed official exchange rate in Argentina by 18% against the dollar and spiking interest rates to an astonishing 118%. Why did he do this? Well. His reasoning was that it was to tackle Argentina's soaring inflation. But his strategy failed, and now Massa's faced with the difficult task of averting a full-blown economic crisis before the new government takes the reins in December. The question of whether he'll be able to achieve this or not has also been affected by two problems. One, his pledge to avoid further pre-election devaluations doesn't stand as strong as it should, and, apparently, local banks aren't attracted anymore to the idea of extending the Argentine government's ever-growing domestic debt burden. In the midst of these developments, the IMF also faces a pivotal decision to make concerning Argentina's economy. There is an existing financial agreement between Argentina and the IMF that runs into the billions. But, while the IMF has been able to fulfil its part of the deal, the country has not. So, the challenge on the IMF's table, to be specific, is deciding whether to approve an additional $7.5 billion disbursement to Argentina from a $44 billion refinancing program the country already enjoys. And it's an important decision because it carries significant implications for Argentina's economy as a whole. As a matter of fact, many are calling it the make or break deal for Argentina's economy. So, fingers crossed, because if all goes well, it will definitely help get their economy stabilised. Now. Let's focus on some optimism we found on the status of Argentina's economic stability. Yes, there's a lot of uncertainty at the moment, but in the midst of it, some investors are pretty interested in the medium-term growth potential Argentina's economy could realise as time goes on. 
Some of these investors have shared that the collapse of the Peronist government, for example, is a signal that Argentines are prepared for a different kind of free market reforms, where voluntary exchange and the laws of supply and demand provide the sole basis for the economic system without government intervention. And this was shown when, during the recently concluded election, up to two-thirds of the voters went to right or far-right parties advocating for streamlined welfare programs, dismantled exchange controls, curbed central bank money printing and unleashed business potential. Other promising factors like robust lithium mining, rapidly expanding shale oil and gas production and potent agribusiness exports are things that lend credence to Argentina's underlying economic strength. From a political perspective, the investors also foresee the possibility of Patricia Bullrich from Juntos por el Cambio clinching the presidency. And they believe that even if the maverick Milai were to take the lead, his potential lack of a congressional majority might necessitate policy moderation during his term. Yes, Argentina's path toward economic stability and prosperity remains narrow and treacherous. The looming risks of a disorderly devaluation, spiraling hyperinflation or a government default before the election cannot be ignored. Overall, the victor in the upcoming presidential election will face the difficult task of restoring economic confidence, navigating painful reforms, attracting investments and fostering a national consensus capable of forestalling debilitating social unrest. This formidable challenge would be demanding even for the most skilled and seasoned statesman, let alone a far-right populist championing unconventional economic viewpoints. They also won't be able to point fingers at the IMF for the country's dire economic predicament, which is why Millet's vows to dollarize the economy and disrupt the central bank to thwart Argentina's corrupt political caste from excessive peso printing better be the solution to the problem in some godly fashion because his vision resonates against Argentina's desperate economic backdrop. President Alberto Fernandez's government has imposed foreign exchange restrictions and exchange rates have surged due to a rush for dollars, so it's pretty difficult to see how this charismatic libertarian's vision is the key Argentines have been after for years. But who knows? Maybe we're wrong. Maybe you guys think differently? Let us know in the comments section below. We've also talked about how Argentina's IMF lifeline agreement in 2022 all of the country's fiscal, monetary and reserve targets have been missed, so it's unlikely that they'll be getting the help they need anytime soon. Argentina has also been experiencing an export decline to the tune of $20 billion that the government said was caused by severe drought, but the IMF has said that the problem started and got increased when the economy got inflated through energy subsidies and an overvalued exchange rate. Now, Argentina's on the edge of default, needing to repay short-term debt to China, Qatar and the Development Bank of Latin America. Also, with nearly 40% of the populace below the poverty line, it's no surprise that Milai's promise to replace pesos with dollars found favour, particularly among the youth. However, markets have reacted with concern because right after the election, peso holders were seen rushing for dollars and that led to a 22% peso devaluation. Granted, the IMF had itself requested the peso devaluation before dispersing its commitment to Argentina, but then at what cost? What's the point of getting these disbursements when at the end of the day the peso's value has to suffer for it? So what's been determined by analysts is that whether Milai clinches victory in October or not, his radical libertarian aspirations will collide with the economic and social realities of his people. He has ignited a vigorous debate in Argentina, reshaping discussions on the nation's economy and security, and although the primary's results are not conclusive, one thing certainly remains. Argentina moves rightward, and if the Peronists are ousted, they will predictably point fingers at the IMF. So it's been suggested that the proposed fund should bide its time until the situation stabilizes. All right, now that's all we've got on the matter and all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also share with your peeps and press that post notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Until next time, always watch out for the latest news we analyze here and take care.